Um, you know, to have the president talk about you, but it's even more special when he comes and visits. And so that was really important. I am, uh, I hope, um, I hope that most of you now understand what I say, and you've heard me say it over and over again, that I think this president gets it, and I really do mean that, and so hopefully you're starting to understand why I say that. We've invited you not just to hear the president speak, but to, to the next phase of the day. So if I can get everybody to just calm down for a minute, we're going to let you get on buses and go do what you, the other part of what we brought you here for. Space is critical to this nation, and the men and women of NASA are working tirelessly to enable the new plans for NASA. These new plans set the stage for transformative space achievements over the coming years. There are a lot of pe smart people in the room today, lots of smart people in the room today, uh, not the least of whom is my friend Dr. Ed Crawley, who's sitting there going, wonder who he's talking about. Bo Bemick, and I should stop now because I'll run out of names and everything, but there are lots of smart people here and we want to take advantage of having you all here. I know that we can count on all of you to contribute your thoughts and your ideas in the sessions that follow, and we really want you to do that. This is not, um, this is not for show, okay? Please understand. Uh, we want your ideas, we want your thoughts. You're going to hear some panelists talk and give their ideas. If you have competing ideas or ideas to the contrary, uh, it's okay. If we come out of this day and, uh, and it's like we were all looking at the same hymnal and singing the same song, then we have failed. Uh, we really want people to discuss today because we want to learn from you. Before I begin, I've asked two individuals to provide some initial comments as we head into our breakout sessions. These comments will help provide context and foundation for the conversations to come. I'd like to provide some short words of introduction for people who I consider to be national assets and real friends. Dr. John Holdren is the Assistant to the President for Science and Technology and the Director of the White House Sci Office of Science and Technology Policy. John has a long and distinguished history in academia. Besides holding advanced degrees in aerospace engineering and theoretical plasma physics from MIT and Stanford, he has taught at Harvard and Berkeley. He was the director of the independent nonprofit Woods Hole Research Center. He's a member of the National Academy of Sciences, the National Academy of Engineering, and the American Academy of Arts and Sciences, as well as a foreign member of the Royal Society of London. A former president of the American Association for the Advancement of Science, his awards include the MacArthur Foundation Prize Fellowship, the John Hines Prize in Public Policy, the Tyler Prize for Environmental Achievement, and the Volvo Environment Prize. This is the man you want advising the President on science and technology, and we're lucky to have him with us today. Shortly after President Obama took office, he turned to another leader to advise him on the direction of the U.S. space program. That was Norm Augustine. Norm Augustine has served as a leader of some of America's strongest aerospace companies. He's, he is quite possibly the most recognized member of our corporate aerospace community. He served on the President's Council of Advisors on Science and Technology under both Democratic and Republican presidents. In addition, and in addition to last year's committee, he led the 1990 Advisory Committee on the Future of U.S. Space Programs and the 2005 National Academies Commission that produced the landmark report, Rising Above the Gathering Storm, Energizing and Employing America for a Brighter Economic Future. He is also the author of the well-known Augustine Laws books, which feature his deep wisdom and wit. Norm, will you help us by beginning? Charlie, thank you very much, and especially thank you for the plug for my book. If any of you happen to have a copy, you're a member of a very select small group. I, we are very fortunate at this point in time to have a, a leader of NASA such as General Bolden. This is a pivotal time, and his impact is going to be so important. I, I'd like to, before I begin, acknowledge that several members of my committee, our committee, 
are here today. Charlie mentioned several of them, uh, and uh, I'd just like to thank them for all they had done uh, to contribute to this effort. Uh, I've been asked to offer the perspective of our group that conducted the study of future planning for the human space flight program and to uh, share with you a few of the factors that have to be considered in putting together a space program that will be sustainable. Uh, I should mention that our committee had 10 members that included astronauts, scientists, engineers, uh, uh, former presidential appointees, uh, 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 Air Force general officer retired, and, uh, and so on. We were given 90 days to conduct our study, the title of which was Seeking a Human Space Flight Program Worthy of a Great Nation. I should probably emphasize the role that we were asked to take. We were specifically not asked to make a recommendation as to a, sp a particular human space flight program. Rather, we were to offer options. And as I understand it, the reason for that was to permit us to be very independent and dispassionate in trying to provide the pros and cons of various alternatives and not to be burdened with having to defend any particular recommendation. Furthermore, the answer to what is an appropriate space program depends so heavily on what the nation can afford to pay for it. And that, of course, is the role of the Congress and the President and not something that, that we could address. In all candor, I have to say that I've spent most of my adult life working in the space program. I candidly am an advocate. And I have many friends who are on all sides of the current debate about the space program. This is a topic in which reasonable people can and do disagree. Let me quickly summarize the issues that needed to be taken into consideration in putting together a program such as the President has described to us today. It has many moving parts, interdependent moving parts. First of all, there's a space the Space Shuttle Program. A long time ago, the Space Shuttle Program was decided to be terminated at the end of the current fiscal year, and that we would depend upon Russia during the interim until we had a, an appropriate launch vehicle to launch our astronauts into low Earth orbit. That interim appears to be about five to seven years. We could, of course, restart the shuttle program. The problem with doing that is that it, it consumes funds that are badly needed for the exploration program. Furthermore, it confines us to low Earth orbit for a prolonged period of time. It does have the benefit that it helps to reduce the tur turbulence in the employment of a very talented group of people. But once again, one is faced with trying to maintain